Warning. The following podcast contains curses from the goddess of witchcraft, Hecate. This is Crudimentary Questions with your hosts, Sandy and Jill. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Jill. All right. So... Do you have a question for I me? do, of course. Yeah. Always. Have you ever thought about having witch powers? What are witch powers? You know, stuff like, you know, making um, brews, like witches' <laughs> brews, spells, spells, incantations, okay. um, maybe telekinesis. Oh, so are these things that actually work in real life? Um, or are like, cause right now I could go on the internet and find a recipe for like a witch's brew or something or find, you know, some, uh, instructions on how to do an incantation. Are or, you, or are you saying like Wiccan versus like actual magic? Um, yes. And to be clear, I, I do want to make a distinction between the religion that is practiced that is Wiccan or Wicca mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the um sort of fairy tale version of witch right and so i'm thinking of like the fairy tale version i'm not kind of i kind of don't want to get into the actual religion because it's, it's something people actually follow and i don't know anything about it i don't either so if you're asking me have i thought about having witch powers i'm thinking like i i put a spell on someone and it actually works hocus pocus yeah yeah mm-hmm. um i M- haven't really thought about that in terms of witchiness, but I have thought about it um, more of like a a prophet, you know, like oh, you mean gaining money? No, 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 like like a pro like a like a prophet, like I could tell the future. Oh, prophesizing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I've thought about having those sorts of powers. Um, I guess I just uh, have never had the desire to like put a spell on somebody. I suppose. What about a love spell? Why would I want to put a love spell on somebody? I because them... you're you're unloved. But I want them to love me for for real. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm I'm That's I'm good. entirely too ethical apparently to be a fairy tale witch. Okay, what about hexing someone? Isn't that still the bad the bad thing though? Yes. <sighs> no. I mean, I, I you know what I ha- I there are plenty of people in uh, political office that if I could put a hex on them so that they like constantly were farting mm. like on camera mm. you know so one of I my that. favorite movies as a kid that i used to watch is called teen witch if you haven't seen it go watch it i probably wasn't allowed to watch it you probably were not because it has the word because in the it's title. witches and it's about this teenager who is unpopular mm-hmm. and wants to be and she learns from a um psychic lady who is also a witch apparently that she is a witch oh that she is now coming into her own powers it, i think she finds an amulet or something <laughs> anyway there's always an amulet man i you know. gotta stay away from those fucking amulets they just cause trouble she she uh does an incantation mm-hmm. um or spell that makes her popular and she's all pretty and she's got these cute dresses on and stuff oh, and man. she's like trending at yeah. the school everyone's doing what she's doing okay and the guys, she does put a love spell on a guy, okay, which she ends up regretting because he becomes stalky, obsessed yes. to, with her. There's always, always, there's always a backfire. And then she does hex her principal, okay, or no teacher, because he embarrasses her during class. So she creates a voodoo doll that looks like him. Yeah, which I'm, I'm fairly which is, certain is mixing metaphors it's a, little a bit, bit here. It's a little mixture of... Um, they're just like, hey... This, different witchcraft. Like, yeah, so <laughs> they're like, oh, stick a voodoo all witchcraft doll is the same. But she doesn't like stick him with pins or anything yeah. violent like that. But she does mi- like take off his clothes. Oh, so he gets naked in front so of school? So he school? gets naked in front of class. But this is uh, sounding like very... Uh, a problematic film it's it's not it's super fun and 80s and i love it who's in it (laughs) i don't know i don't know their names they haven't been in much okay um and then later on the doll accidentally gets washed by her mom in the washing machine oh no does he get clean he ends up going through a car wash because he has to do whatever the doll does sure sure something Uh, yeah the logic is wonderful and amazing okay does she end up with the guy or I think she ends up 
breaking the popularity spell and the love spell or something and deciding that she doesn't she needs to be need genuinely to do herself. The witch powers. You know, it's kind of a thing that all good witches do is like, I don't need to use my powers. Oh. So it's like, what's the point of being a good witch? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, like, it could be very interesting to delve into the different sorts of lore mm. surrounding witches, like, just specifically with films. Um, but, like, yeah, in The Wizard of Oz, Glinda's the good witch. Yes. And it's really not established how she's different how what does she what does she do does she she sends dorothy home but at the end after dorothy like you know had to go through all that stuff yeah and i'm not I, it's been a while since i saw the movie but like does she learn oh she learns to appreciate kansas i suppose which, she learns to appreciate her home yeah which is kansas she's yeah <clears throat> so <clears throat> i don't know like that maybe <laughs> this is that movie is some like 1950s propaganda of like you know like yes no matter how much your area sucks you know it's it's america so it's great or something like that yes but anyway like i just don't understand like why what does glinda do that makes her better than the wicked witch of the west and why is the witch the west wicked is it it's because of the alliteration is the thing which probably. doesn't seem fair at all probably you know like because the she's the good witch of the north like it's just is so odd to me that they're like if you're if you're sorry you're born in the west therefore you're wicked it's just not fair is what i'm saying <laughs> yeah this- it could have easily been nasty witch from the north yeah it could have been or um you know wonderful witch in the west mm-hmm. you know or i don't know yeah but anyway glinda wore a pretty pink dress and and floated in on a bubble yeah and the wicked witch had a green face so we knew she was bad yeah, and striped socks with the ruby slippers. Yeah. Which um which <laughs> <laughs> which I just learned in a weird internet search that stripes mean bad apparently in our history. Well, prisoners wear stripes. I love it. You are wearing stripes right I'm now. I'm wearing stripes, so I am You're the, just yeah, the you're- most evil yeah, anyway, so the particular lore of uh Wizard of Oz is in fact confusing. And uh, I do not support the hierarchy. It seems fundamentally unjust. Mm. Um, but then even in your teen witch movie, it's it's uh, like, yes, you have these powers and it just shows that you can manipulate mm-hmm. people around you. And it just doesn't seem, I guess you could have that those powers anyway you know even if you didn't have if it wasn't supernatural i would like telekinesis mostly because i'm really lazy Mm -hmm. and when something i have to get up and get something Mm -hmm. you know um that's really the most uncomfortable thing to have to do is when you're all comfy and snuggly Mm -hmm. on the couch and you realize oh your glass of wonderful water is over on the table 10 feet away for me it's the remote controller the remote control. It got yes. put. Yeah, it got left on the table, and I the kids like just. I could out just of reach. float that over. That would just be. There's so many things I could do with telekinesis that isn't bad. Yeah. Or good, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe maybe I could do good. Maybe I could keep. Maybe I'd become a superhero. That's another thing. Witches have powers. Mm-hmm. Why aren't they called superheroes more than just evil witches most of the time? Well, I mean, I think we would have to take. Uh, consider the uh, history of yes. what is... I would like to talk about the history of witches. Okay, so uh, this, I, I don't know a ton about it, but a uh, little over a year ago, I went to Salem, Massachusetts for a wedding. Yes. And um, it's where the, the Salem Witch Trials. Yes. Uh, appropriately named. Um, and so we went to the, uh, they have a museum about the, the trials and it's really cool. I mean, some of it's kind of cheesy, but uh, of course, yeah. One thing they learned because um, it's cheesy to to you know have a museum about burning women at the stake, right? Well, <laughs> when I said cheesy, I meant that there's like these very strange figures that um, are like a wax museum, but worse. Oh, okay. Like just like it's the, just cheap. It cheap, looks a cheap museum. There's a, it looks kind of cheap, but the the information is very good. Cool. Um, but there's this whole like thing. I'm not going to go into it. It's a great museum and you should go there. How about that? I actually, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, so one of the things they talked about was like, where did this concept of witches come from mm. to begin with? Mm-hmm. And it came from like, you know, far, far into the ancient past. 
um, one, it definitely stems from a distrust of women. Right. Um, the Before there was a, like proper physicians or medical care. Because only women were accused of witchcraft or were there any men? For um, Oh, in, um, in Salem. Salem, only women were accused of being witches, but there were a couple men executed. Oh, for their support. Or, yeah, the or, the, or just not denying it or something. Right, right, right. Uh, well, we can get to that in a minute because mm. that's not really why anybody was executed. Mm -mm. Uh, but so er, the initial idea of the witch was she was like the medicine person. Right. And it was because... She was the healer. Yeah, and because women were so involved usually with uh, childbirth and the care of the children, uh, they would end up with all this, like, medical knowledge, what the best they had at the time, you know, using the resources that they had. Um, and so they were, you know, mixing up the herbs and, you know, making, you know... Witch's brew. Essentially making witch's brew. A lot of times, though, um, if it was they would she would be accused of what we would call witchcraft now but it was just some sort of uh she would be accused of poisoning because she was the right. only person who had this power this knowledge and sure like you know she could pass it on to you know another another person but it was almost always a woman who lived alone out like separate from the community because they were kind of ultimately afraid of her mm. um and eventually it just turned to like if something went wrong in the village they just blamed her because she had warts all over her nose she and had, she was it was ugly it was so. the warts and the green skin didn't uh didn't help yes and the pointy hat uh yeah i mean when she had, and then it's just the broom i mean it was just giving it away just giving yeah, it away i mean i could understand that yeah so by the time we they got to the salem witch trials um they uh a lot of it is just uh uh, an, uh, uh, like fear of something they didn't know or understand. Right. Um, and, and and there was the puritanical time where every any anything that was not the normal yeah. was look frowned upon. Well, it was fr it was frowned upon. Um, but the the basically the the person or the the, the catalyst is the word I'm looking for. The catalyst of the witch trials and everything was a slave from the Caribbean. Oh, really? Yeah, and she was she would uh talk about um voodoo and stuff and 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 yeah uh, uh, was she from haiti i think she was either haitian or she was from barbados oh okay um but right yeah so she's one not there you know uh, uh by choice <laughs> um and then these little uh puritan girls started asking her about you know, her past. And so I, I might be getting some of this wrong, but I think she kind of like embellished some things to just entertain them. Oh, and so then, they, yeah. So and so started. then they started, it became this like moment of like, uh, kind of mass hysteria or just these girls playing a joke that they just did not understand the seriousness of. Right. Where they all started like getting sick and like throwing up and like having seizures and convulsing. So did I, I read something that, may contribute uh, a theory mm -hmm. to the Salem witch trials. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, around Salem, mm -hmm. there were mushrooms growing. Oh. And um, I'm trying to remember what they were called. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Basically, LSD-type mushrooms, okay. uh, psychotropic drugs yeah. that got into the rye bread. Oh. And, the, and affected the diet of the people living in Salem. Yeah. And caused all the symptoms that uh, that exhibited, you know, hallucinations yeah. and vomiting and um, n the hysteria. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so some some scientist um, actually did research on this recently, okay. Okay. and I just I'll stumbled upon it, and I was like, "What?" So all these women died on a burning cross or whatever it was they it? were all hung they were hung or burned they were hung for the i'm pretty sure they most of them were hung hung hanged they hanged. died yeah they were executed because they were hopped up on some lsd they were tripping type <laughs> they were tripping yeah i feel so bad but that there was this scientific cause of all this well, I, mean, I mean it's yeah. a theory it's not proven or yeah, anything they yeah. didn't do autopsies or anything but, but i mean yeah yeah there was you know the scripture is just full of stories about uh casting demons out of people and like we read it now we're like oh my god they were having a seizure you know right and so exactly this is what happens when you just don't know something and you you attribute a lack of understanding to the supernatural mm. despite the fact that there could be some other explanation you just don't know it yet um so wow. the, yeah that's a big problem also one of the things we learned at the museum is that uh 
a lot of the people who were executed, the people who um, condemned them, like the judges and the juries, just happened to, like, owe them money. Oh, man. Yeah. So a lot, it was pretty clear if you followed, like... That's the, M for the, motive. Yeah. Capital you, M for motive. If you followed the, the like, the the histories of these people back, you, you realize that there's this alarming trend of all the people getting executed were getting uh, condemned by people who, uh, like, they were either having land disputes or they owed the money or something like that. So it's like these people right. were not necessarily, they were, they put on this righteous uh, facade to justify uh, executing these people. Well, yeah, there were probably people who didn't even exhibit, who were, who were not exhibiting the hallucination, the actual symptoms of anything. Yeah. Um, but were accused of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think back then, wasn't it true that uh, if a man said anything, like a family member man said anything about a woman, they would believe him over the woman every time? I don't know if that was like law. And again, it was like 1600s in, you know, Massachusetts. So we didn't have, you know, constitution was not a thing. Um <clears throat> But I'm sure just at least uh, socially that was true. I think so. Well, who knows? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not from that time period. Yeah, I'm not. I'm very, and thank very goodness. Pleased. Very pleased thank that I'm not. Thank goodness, because I would have been accused of being a witch from the moment I pretended I had a magic wand mm -hmm. that was actually a stick yeah. in the yard. Yeah. I did that a lot. Well, I mean... It was well. It was part of the media you had growing up, you know, involved the wands and and that sort of thing. But this is why I think Salem now is like a center for, like, the city itself is just full of like stores with Wiccan stuff and witchcraft stuff, and like they kind of took it back. You know, they're That's like, cool. yeah, it's really neat to walk down and they're just all like in the middle of you know. This was in May uh, yes. when when we went, and like there were people dressed as witches just walking down the street. You know? How were they dressed as witches? They were dressed like the stereotypical pointy hat. For pointy the most hat, part. okay. Pointy part. Hat but witch. then you go into the stores, and the stores are much more Wiccan, and so there's you know. Yeah, there's... I would probably dress like um, like the girl from The Craft. Yeah, I, I know. Like all oh, goth. God. Oh, The Craft. Oh. Yes. Oh my, that I, would be fun. That that was mm. my that was my um other favorite movie growing. Up. I just like I was obsessed with witchcraft growing well, up. Well, I mean, I think you're also probably just fantasy and powers and mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that And the idea of giving women power was very cool to me, specifically. Yeah. A woman power because yeah. superheroes are so masculine yeah for the most part even and, though yeah even though they're, <laughs> this always got me especially when like certain dudes like get upset that there's like oh female superhero or something Ugh. and they're like oh god this is so unrealistic and i'm like motherfucker <laughs> like cyclops you yeah. know like or i'm sorry the hulk yeah like he's you not it's realistic he he didn't the only superhero that has any uh, to me like merit uh, or could justify um, his powers uh, with merit is Batman because he has no superpowers. He just worked really hard to and get he's really rich. good, and he's rich. Let's not forget that he's rich. He's very rich. You don't. There's no poor Batman. He has a butler dad. Yeah, he has a butler dad. Who's <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I mean, and even and Tony Stark is the exact same way. It's just like yeah. these. And I understand that there are these the, the, these fantasies of like, what if I was rich, super smart. Got all the women, was a total playboy, and I was a superhero. Right. What if I was all of those things? And we we're like, oh, I wonder why he to uh, Iron Man was such a success, you know? But it is, yeah, it's nice to, like, look at these uh, stories of, like, of, of witches being powerful. And a lot of times they're, they're, they're powerful, like, really despite being treated horribly. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. And despite being ostracized, and I think that's what one of those things. I, th I think the entire lore of witches says a lot about one how you know society has viewed women, you know, all this time. Like, give a woman any kind of power, and they're absolutely terrified of her. You know, make sure, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, make, the, I make think... sure make sure she can't you know do anything to you. Yeah, and I think that the um, that the idea just because a woman is, is has powers makes her evil 
mm-hmm. is not necessarily true because there should, you know, as we've talked about, there's uh-huh. good and there's bad witches. Uh-huh. I would be a, a sometimes bad witch, probably. Nothing, nothing harmful. I would never kill anyone. That's the thing. I wouldn't either. Yeah. I would just probably like to embarrass a few people mm-hmm. and um, just have them try to explain something. And it, uh, I think that there's this rule uh, with at least a lot of witch uh, movies have this rule of like no personal gain. Oh, I didn't get that. Well, I could see there being a witch code for sure. You know, um, yeah, uh, I think in in the show Charmed, that was it. You couldn't right. you couldn't create money for yourself, or, or you would always. They were good witches. Okay, they could only help other people. Okay, they okay. couldn't. Um, <clears throat> they couldn't help themselves with anything like money and like what would happen if and they love did. and stuff. Um, I think they would turn like black hearted or something and become an evil witch. It's, but I love that show because yeah. it's so good. Uh huh. And well, I, I mean. I don't know why. That's all right. I mean, I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's a very prominent witch oh, uh, right. character. Yes. Um, right. And she go- She turns into a bad witch at one point. They all do. Oh, that's man. always that's, that's a that's trope. The, that's the witch arc. Yeah. It's an, it's an arc. Mm. You have to see them as a bad witch. And then they overcome the evil tendencies. Yeah. Everyone has a dark side, uh-huh. kind of a moral thing. Yeah. And, yeah. I think they get a bad rap. I yes. think in, for the most part, and, and now in, like, society is more progressive than it was. I mean, I feel like we're running backwards sometimes. But um, we can recognize that the danger presented, one of the reasons they're so scary or they've been so historically scary, is that they will buck the, you know, the status quo. And they'll be, you know, because a lot of times it's a trope, but you see them like they're not married. Mm, they're always you know, single yeah they're like they don't have kids yeah typically. they're not fulfilling a traditional uh feminine role mm. you know that whatever society has put on them and right. um a lot of times you know i've heard getting a bit into wicca uh i've heard people who um have you know use aspects of that in their life talk about it being kind of a very fundamentally feminine thing like Right. Because like be, get, taking like Mother Earth and like learning from Mother Earth and r- using her resources um, and uh, and f- creating life in the way that women do. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> oh, how nice. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about like the evil stuff that that we could do. What could we do? Oh, what would we do that's evil? Yeah. Okay. So um, that's it. I don't want to hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. But I would definitely, like, inconvenience them greatly, I would say. Like, I would just hide their car keys. <laughs> just, and, but I keep moving them, too. And I keep, like, I'd move, like, I hide the car keys, and then when they finally found them, I'd, like, have the cat, like, jump out of nowhere, so they drop the car keys, and then I'd hide them again. Oh, that's another thing I love about witches. They have cat familiars, oh, typically. And I'm, I'm a big cat person, yeah. so that's, that's right up there. If I was a witch, I would certainly have a cat just yeah. like hanging out with me all the time. I think that's what it is. It's like the mystery behind them that just it fascinates mm-hmm. me. And and the women thing. Yeah. Um Yeah, so we haven't talked about the fact that you're you grew up uh-huh. being told that witches all witches were witchcraft was bad yes and evil Uh uh-huh no matter if they did good or bad well there was no such thing as doing good i mean either way you use your powers and it's bad yeah yeah it's manipulating because of course they believe that one it's real but it's but not that they're but that they're getting if they have any power it's coming from demons oh yeah so no matter what if somebody if like whether it's voodoo or you know anything except basically worshiping the lord jesus christ is demonic and that honestly that by the way includes hypnotism mm. like if you've ever been to a state fair and oh. like you know there was like there's a hypnotist and he makes people quack like ducks and that sort of thing that was considered demonic as well well it's embarrassing so that yeah, would, yeah. i would count that as an evil thing too <laughs> yeah yeah but, but yeah we yeah it was very much a anti um anything uh supernatural that wasn't supernatural God. yes yeah. so you know that that included ouija boards and it's funny, though, because, and I know I keep correlating with uh-huh. superpowers, but you don't hear Christians being like, ban the superhero I mean, franchise. S- some of them were at one point. I really? know I was not allowed to do any, involve myself in, uh, with 
superheroes at all. Um, but that was generally because something about Eastern religion might sneak in. Um, like, I was not allowed to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <gasps> oh, my I gosh. know, and I loved them. I oh. loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, uh, oh, they did so good things. Yeah, they did They did great. Well, but, I... <sighs> I don't know what we're going to look up on internet. Yeah, Do you have any can... ideas? I mean, we could just sort of maybe delve into some of the history. Yes. Or we could just find out why they why uh, media depicts witches wearing pointy hats. <gasps> Ooh, I like that. I like wh- why is that? What what's with the pointy hat? What's with the pointy stupid hat? Yeah. Um, they seem very to have to serve no function. And I would like one. Okay. <laughs> Happy Halloween. We're going to buy one. Yeah. Okay. We'll be back. Hey, faithful listeners, uh, we would love for you to be a little bit more involved in our lives. I know we share a lot of really personal information, but what I want to know is, what do you want us to talk about? Yeah. Do you have any questions for us that is that are crudimentary? Is there a subject that you're just dying to hear us talk about? And we would love for you to submit those questions to our Gmail account, which is crudimentaryquestions at gmail.com. It's super straightforward, y'all. Yeah, email us a, a, a list of questions, one question. Hey, maybe you've been wondering something all your life and the oh. internet couldn't answer it for you. Maybe we could. If you have some questions, please send them to crudimentaryquestions at gmail.com. Back to the show. We're back. We're back. We're going to ask the internet about why these witches have pointy hats. Because they seem, yeah, just... uh, It seems cliche. It's cliche, sure. But it's also, it's just very, very silly. Yes. So, okay. I'm going to Yahoo Answers because that's where all the facts lie. Yes. That is how, uh, that is how we know anything Um, because of Yahoo. If you're writing a, um, a paper, if you're writing a paper, um... Make sure to cite Yahoo Answers as one mm-hmm. of your sources. Sources, yeah. And okay. make sure you cite the user too. Yes. Um, so this person asks, "Why do witches wear pointy hats?" The best answer comes from a Yahoo user Wavy. I'm wavy. Um, it, it was believed the point was a way to center energy towards the sky. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think this is true? No. <laughs> um. All right, so the, the next person was said, at no point in history have, pe- have people calling themselves witches or witches worn pointy hats. However, the image of the pointy hat has become interwoven in the myth of witches and wizards, um, and, it, and it is, the reason for it is sketchy. This Th- person doesn't know how to do sentences, yeah. but okay. <laughs> Neither do you. <laughs> the best guess that I have scene is that we know that heretics were often made to wear tall conical hats without rims when being executed marking them for what they were oh kind of like a dunce cap yeah but like big and scary and medieval witchcraft persecutions came out of heretic trials and witches thus at least sometimes also wore these hats to execution gosh this person needs to learn sentence Structure, <laughs> subject. It's that. Wa- is that still wavy, or is that a different person? Uh, it's. Uh, oh, sorry. This is Nightwind. Hi, Nightwind. You can't talk good. <laughs> um. So okay, do we think we think that's true, or I mean, there's there's we're not going on much here. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I have never heard, and I've I would like to think I'm. I, I have quite a. Quite yeah, did they show that at history. the at the at the museum? Did they show? They didn't show that. <clears throat> All right. Well, and I I mean we you know in I learned a lot about um, I don't know so much about heretic trials, but like a lot about church history, <clears throat> um, mm. and growing up and in college, and so I mean they would talk about like the you know uh, Inquisition and things like that, but I never did hear about pointy hats. Though it does make the heretic executions a little funny. Yes. It's uh they think they put the hat on, they're like, We just need to lighten the mood. They probably look like a bunch of little garden gnomes being yeah, hanged or yeah. something. And they'd be like, Poor guys. Oh no, they're like, Oh, I feel cute. Oh my gosh, David the gnome. Oh. <laughs> Remember him? Is he the one that got in all the pictures? He's the cartoon character. I, unfamiliar. 
You weren't allowed to watch David the Gnome? I don't know what it is. Your parents are evil. <laughs> you couldn't watch David the Gnome? I couldn't the... watch the Care Bears. Okay, that's messed up. I know, because the because of the witchcraft thing. What? Yeah. Because of, I, we need to do a separate episode that's just about Care Bears? Yeah, or just witchcraft in like things that are perceived as witchcraft in media. Any any cartoon character that had a special power um, was uh, forbidden because it was witchcraft. We weren't allowed to watch the Smurfs because of uh, Gargamel. He had like a like a potion or something. There was like a oh well, that was definitely. I mean, he was more. I guess a warlock. Okay, a warlock. I would say yeah. yeah. And then there was um, a show called The Gummy Bears, and they made potions, so we couldn't watch that. Gummy Bears. Oh, gosh. Oh, and My Little Pony we couldn't watch because they had, like, magical powers. That's messed up. And what up. was the other? Rainbow Bright we couldn't watch because they all had magical in... powers. What did you watch? Garfield and Friends and Winnie the Pooh. Oh, well, Garfield is a witch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> if so, You know what? I swear to God, there's this radio personality called Dr. James Dobson uh, who uh, apparently had a short conversation with Donald Trump and decided that he was a Christian. So this is how... This is how credible this person is. Anyway, if he had said that Garfield was a witch on the radio, my parents would have believed him. So, you know. Well, I mean, you could you could make anything into a witch. I mean, if you just stretch it enough. Yeah. You know, the fact that Garfield could talk without moving its mouth. Yeah. That's it, enough. Yeah. It's pretty. I mean, because, you know, um, the dog didn't talk. Odie didn't talk. Odie, Odie was dumb as shit. Yeah, well, he was, uh, he was, yeah, he was like the normal dog. Not a witch. Not a witch. Not a witch. Garfield was a witch. I like this. <laughs> All right, so the other thing we were going to look up is why do they fly on brooms? Yeah. What do, do you think? I think they fly on brooms. Um, this is great. Let's just bullshit. Yes. Let's just bullshit some answers. Yes. Let me try to say it like I, like I really believe it. Yes. Um, witches used to ride on brooms uh, because they reject the uh, status quo of feminine roles Ooh. where they were required to clean. And so oh. they took a cleaning instrument mm. and would use it as a as a as a as a uh, like a, a escape way to, uh, as an escape in a way to uh, show their power. Oh, you want me to sweep the kitchen? Well, what if I just flew out of here? Yeah, give me yeah. that. Give, yeah, you give me that broom. Yeah, I'll show I'm you what out. I'll do with this broom. I'm out. I'm gonna s- not stick it up anybody's butt. But it's my first thought. What do you? <laughs> what's what I'm gonna do with this broom? Stick it up your butt? No, I'm just gonna fly <laughs> away on it. That's all. It, there is a phallic thing that must must have something to do with I it. I right? always feel like they they're are sticking it in between it, their legs. But don't they ride it si- like side saddle style style? Oh no. I mean the the wicked witch in the West, she straddles that thing. She okay, she works it. She gets it. And she, you know, has the I don't know how, but smoke comes out of the end of the broom like a like it's a jet oh, plane. Like, a, like it, oh so it's like and an he, ejaculating. She, she writes yeah. you know what does she write to Dorothy? I forgot. It was like Go home? No, yeah. no, she didn't say go home. Somebody tell us what they wrote. Yeah, it was, I'm I, not gonna I look believe it up. the oh, message could, was something to the extent of like "fuck you, bitch," <laughs> but like for you know, Wizard of Oz skywriting. I I do have the internet at my disposal. <laughs> oh, surrender! Gosh, that must have taken her forever. Yeah, I really she feel like wrote there's surrender, a shorter... Dorothy. Good lord, that must have taken two hours. She's just watching, sir. What do you think? What do you serene. think? Is that a is that a, is that a, Surrender. that's another R. It's another R. Dora. It's a, it's a, it's a, Doro. Do, oh, oh, is she writing my name? Dora. Okay, I, okay. I know she's writing my, she's still writing my name. God, Does she a, not realize that I know that all, like, D-O-R-O-T is pretty, what a pretty bitch. good? Yeah. Pretty good indication that you're writing Dorothy. And, you know, I mean, at least Glenda the Good Witch would have written something shorter, like, you know. Get out. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> <laughs> just lol yeah well and also like how many um people is the wicked witch of the west trying to like kick out of oz that she has to specify dorothy i don't know like are there other people that she's like harassing maybe there's just an oz? endless amount of dorothy's in the wizard of oz it's, it's like jennifer it's like like the whole thing where like all the girls were named jennifer between like 1979 and 1988 like, she's, she's telling everyone and it turns out that it was Dorothy and I. One of Munchkin, the Munchkins. In one of the Munchkins from Munchkin. It's probably, you know, named Dorothy. Yeah. Looked up and said, "Surrender from 
what? Yeah. No, no, no. It turns out one of the munchkins named Dorothy was like having a fight like with her sister. <gasps> yes. And then she sees the sky. It's like literally written in the sky. Surrender Dorothy. And so she like gives up a bunch of money or something. And it's just like there's like there's horrible... another there's a there's another plot. There's a that whole we did not other see plot. in Wizard of Oz. OK, anyway. So why did they um, fly on brooms? <clears throat> Someone answered um, because they have to get to and from their meetings, uh, Black Sabbaths, quickly, and Radar will not pick them up riding a broomstick. What? Ra- ra- radar? Radar. In, w- like, when? I don't know. Because um, they can't not- fly on legal planes, apparently, to get to their Black Sabbaths. Okay. <laughs> Most of the time... This particular image of a witch is happening in the distant past. Yeah. B- before things like radar. I know. I know. Who, who, who said that? Um, their username is just a question mark. Yeah. Well, that sounds about right. Okay. So this person is a little more. Um, Not an idiot. Knowledgeable. Okay. okay. Um. A broom is a handy household object. It would escape notice if the witch finders came round looking for evidence. Every woman had one to sweep up with, after all. <laughs> so it's convenience. Yeah. It would be, uh, I guess, weird to have a flying, I don't know. A little tiny helicopter? Jetpack? Yeah. <laughs> Jetpack. Um, I like in uh, the movie Hocus Pocus, she has a flying vacuum cleaner. Oh, does she? Because that was like oh, the yeah. next. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I also feel like the implication there is like no man has ever touched a broom. No man has ever touched a broom. Well, because that's what the, they're like. Every woman, after all, would have a broom. I will say it's that like every household has a broom. Yes. I will say that we we sweep. Mm-hmm. Me and my husband sweep. I am also a sweeper. When we got a Roomba, however. <sighs> eh, not so much need. The Roomba does it. Yeah. I don't need to sweep anymore. Yeah, it's fine. So it's just. Would you would you ride your Roomba? Oh, my cat does. <laughs> <laughs> but could if your Roomba if you could fly on your Roomba would you? I don't think I would because even though, like it's just not big enough. It'd be more of a hovering, wouldn't it? I, I don't know if there's a. I guess you, you could. You just have to balance really well. Yeah, I don't want to do that. that sounds, uh, I wouldn't ride annoying. the Roomba. Fly the no. Roomba. I would not fly the Roomba without like a, um, uh, parachute. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, um, so, okay. This next person said, okay. There are theories that the use of the broom came during the planting season when women would straddle a broom and ride along the fields to ensure a prosperous harvest. They would jump while riding the broom, and the height was supposedly how high they would deem the crop would grow. It can be assumed that onlookers, not knowing what is what it is that they were seeing would deem these women to be witches riding across the sky. Meanwhile, they never left the ground. Wow. Interesting. I I think it, I would find it odd that this was some kind of custom that a person, an onlooker wouldn't know what it was. Yeah. Because if they're all like in the same area, this isn't like, you know, this is all happening in, you know, new England and some guy from Texas shows up. You know, like that would be just a big deal. I don't know. I don't like any of these answers. I these think answers they all are suck. bullshit. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, maybe they don't fly on brooms. I think it's it's very much a possibility that uh, people can't fly on brooms. I think it's possible. But I mean, seriously, if- is there a Wikipedia article that actually explains? I think it's possible. A no- oh, a Wikipedia. Well, um, just because I feel like they might have a real answer. Watch it be the stupid uh, okay, crop okay. one. Okay. Um, why do witches fly on brooms? But <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is if you could animate mm-hmm. a broom to yeah. fly, couldn't you just make yourself fly? That's also was another Why do you need an yeah. extra thing? I don't Are you, carry it. You be, couldn't you just fly like Superman or like Mary Poppins? Yeah. You know, with an umbrella. Did she need the umbrella? Or was it I don't just know. Maybe, to look cool? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was a style thing. Yeah. Um, why do witches... Oh, this is a whole article. This looks boring. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not reading this, okay. Sandy. <laughs> you don't I, 
<laughs> I think everyone can Google. Yeah. I th- You know what's funny? Like, you definitely read the article about, or looked up the article about micropenises. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> this has broken you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, witches riding a broom has broken you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. Flying ointment. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm bored. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, this is on Wikipedia. Apparently... Flying ointment, also known as witch's flying ointment, green ointment, magic salve, and lincothropic ointment is a hallucinogenic ointment said to have been used by witches in the practice of European witchcraft from at least as early as the early modern period when detailed recipes for such preparations were first recorded. Oh, shoot. This all goes all the way back to Francis Bacon. Oh, damn. Yeah, so apparently this is an actual historical, um, uh, like, medicine okay. type, or I guess poison. Okay. Um, potion. Potion. Potion, That's yes. the word. Ooh, ooh, this picture's cool. There's a picture of two old hags naked on a broom and flying. Hot. Interesting, though, that the, it's backwards. Check this out. The, the. The broom itself is backwards. Oh, it's it's backwards from the way that we normally think about it. So, like, the bush thing. The bush is in the front. The bush is in the front. Like it should be. Well, I think we should go to our Ask a Guy section. Ask a guy about witches. Yeah. Um, and I know the perfect person to call. You do? I do. Who? Well, you're just going to have to wait to find out. Oh, teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, sounds good. We'll be back. Ask a guy, ask a guy, we need a man's opinion, so we'll ask a guy. Hey, Zach, this is Sandy. Hey, Sandy. Hey, and this is Jill. Welcome to Crudimentary Questions. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Today, we are discussing the fabulous topic of witches. Mm. And um, I know that they have been on your mind lately. So uh, perhaps you could uh, just tell us what it is about them that is so fascinating to you. Is it because they're hot? I'm just kidding. No, it's not. I mean, I, I've done a lot of, you know, liturgical research and um, and uh, medieval research in my sort of past life as an academic and there was just a lot of uh, a lot of witchy activity uh, in the in, you know in the olden days that um, was uh, was on kind of on uh, everyone's mind. Um, could you describe some of that witchy activity? Yeah, sure. So there was you want some of this? sorry, I got this baby trying to get a piece of pineapple here while I'm talking, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so. During the, I guess the mass in the Western Church in the, in the in the Middle Ages, commemoration of the dead was a common part of liturgical life, and one of the curses that people would put on people was to take living people and put their names on the commemorations of the dead, as a way of sort of ju- kind of jumping the gun, and uh, and uh, cursing them and, and getting them to die prematurely. It's a sick burn. It's a sick burn. <laughs> So your fascination is that people were doing that kind of thing, um, and I, I guess they were just trusting that it worked. Well, what's interesting to me is that there was is that the sort of the reality of the like the physical reality of religion was was so universally accepted that you know the idea that you could take some kind of physical uh, piece of liturgical life and then. Uh, you know, sort of pervert it to evil means. Mm. There's a long list of curses uh, during the the um, kind of shit talking during the schism in the 11th century, the 9th century, I guess. Or, I'm sorry, the 10th, I should say, uh, back and forth. And there's one. Uh, I don't know where it's from. It might be from Arkard, but it's just a huge list of just curses of just Greek curses that they were casting on on the. Uh, uh, the West and the other on the other churches. Interesting. That's the whole document. So it's kind of, so it's kind of like a a, a war of spells in a way. <laughs> a war, yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of a war of spells. I mean, really bad news, no matter how you turn it. 
Would, yeah. you, would you call those people like wizards or witches? I mean, I don't know what the difference is. No, see, this is the thing is like, is that is I think that like what witchcraft or not witchcraft really is the question then. Like a person's identity as a witch or not a witch, that's a little, I feel like that's later. And I'm speaking out of turn here. I don't really, once we get into, like once we get beyond like the 13th or 14th century, I'm a little bit out of more out of my depth. But um, I think that when you get into witch trials and stuff and people are actually being tried as witches, there's sort of a probably a political element at play. Whereas you're not trying people for specific acts, you're actually trying them for their identity as a witch, which is a little darker, right? That becomes a little bit more yes. political automatically. Yes. This is this is maybe this conversation maybe is less funny than you were hoping it was going to be. No, no. <laughs> I, I mean it's it's funny and fascinating and we're just like it's honestly I'm so interested. I just don't want to interrupt you. We were talking about Wizard of Oz earlier and there's yes. the good witch. The good witch and the bad witch. Yeah. Is that does that exist in you know our history? Is there, are all witches evil in the past? I don't even I, know. Or is yeah, witchy I, activity good or bad? Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that I would say, and again, I'm not an expert on this. I've read about a lot of things, but mostly what I am familiar with is from an ecclesiastical perspective, a liturgical perspective, and witchiness mm -hmm. is usually a perversion of things that are understood to be supernatural in their own right. For example. There's a song, which you may have heard, called Abuses and Superstitions by the Mute Group. <laughs> and by, by who is that? Yeah, by the Mute Group. <laughs> They're terrific. <laughs> that, would be your, that would be your band. <laughs> yeah, it's my band. <laughs> yes. But the whole, all of the material for that song is actually taken from, that, most of it, almost all of it, is taken from a chapter of a book by um, uh, Adolf Franz. It's an, it's a book, it came out in 1902. And it's called uh, Die Messe im Deutschen Mittelalter, which is the Mass in the German Middle Ages. And it's not, there's no English translation of it, but I did for a course, um, for a paper actually, for credit, I, I translated a chapter of it called Abuses and Superstitions, in which he talks at length about a lot of these practices that were going on in Germany uh, all through the Middle Ages. And among them, uh, that, were, that we, we picked up, for the lyrics of the song, we're putting the host, you know, the consecrated host. This is another interesting mm -hmm. thing. So, I mean, the host is protected now um, very strongly in both churches, in the Eastern Church and the, and the Western Church, I think it's, or the, the Catholic Church, I'd say, in the Orthodox Church. Both, uh, you take it there. You eat, you know, you take communion at church. But in, it, in the olden days, you, say, you take it home. When you say host, are you referring to the, the, body. the place? No, the host, I'm referring oh, to the oh, body, like, yeah, the, uh, the consecrated, uh, the body of Christ after oh, the consecration, okay. oh, right? See, I so didn't the bread, know that. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that you could take it home and, um, and commune, sort of commune yourself at home. And one of the reasons they don't do that anymore is that people were, were up to all kinds of shenanigans with it. And people among like the, shenanigans. But they, they love them, they really do, because they have this magic stuff at this point, right? I mean, this, this, they have this mm -hmm. stuff that really has a supernatural. Uh, element uh, to it, and um, and so they would do crazy things with it, and they would one among them they would put it in the ho they put it in the in their beehives if their bees were ailing, not their hair to be specific. It's an actual beehive, right? It's a yeah. I know I'm I, I that was an ambiguous way for me to put that. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I should have been clearer. I mean, yeah, I, first thing I thought of was you know like March the beehive. No, no, no. Right. I was using context clues. <laughs> I think, yeah. he, I think he means a beehive. So that's what it is. You asked about good, good witch and bad witch. I really think that witchiness was about your activity. And this is a lot more honest look at, at human beings, I think, as well, right? Because it's not like there are just people who only do bad things and people who only do good things. Mm -hmm. You know, good people do horrible things all the time. I don't, know which one I, I don't know which one I am, but I know that I do awful things all the time. And I like to think I do a good thing here and there. So and like and likewise with these witchy people, right? These were devout people, often, who maybe just whose bees were ailing. Yeah. You know, and so they got superstitious with the sacrament. So these were yeah, these were good people who took these elements of uh, the Eucharist or communion yes. and took them home and yes. did things that were technically perverted by the church's standards with them, which yeah. then got called witchcraft or witchiness. Yeah, I mean, that's the essence of it, I think. I mean, I'm not sure about other... I mean, I guess you'd have to go further back to, to find supernatural elements outside of the church, because the church is so ubiquitous. 
I'd be really I interested to know the history of witchcraft in the Muslim world. Oh, I yes. bet it's I bet yeah. it's crazy. Well, I'll maybe next really time when we when we when we do the subject again, you would have studied up on that. Um, <laughs> so you've got your homework to do, Mr. You Zach. You have an assignment. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be really compelling. I'm sure that there's a really interesting history. I do think that there's a long history of Jewish spell uh, spell saying. I don't know. There's going to be a good verb mm-hmm. for that for saying a spell. I don't know anything about it though but yeah there's a lot to think about there i think it it does seem like most like every major religion has some factor of uh of like taking i mean because religions break off into different sects and everything but um you know they 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 take the sort of like base elements that are understood to be used within the church and then they use them in their own special way and then they get like condemned for it Hmm. well it's interesting right but they're taking i mean the base elements right the base elements are transformed in the context of the church, mm-hmm. right? So this is the actual, this is the real alchemy, right? And mm-hmm. then it's, and then those elements are sort of taken. I know that I've read about, about uh, priests uh, kind of probing their fingers around in people's mouths to make sure that they weren't smuggling uh, bits of communion out oh. in their cheeks oh my goodness. and under their tongues. Pilfering the body of Christ, that Pilfering, is not okay. that's absolutely, it's... no, I mean, that's, uh, people do it, but they do it for these reasons, you know, they do it for these things, they would make love potions, there's a really long history of love potions, Yeah, yeah. which is pretty cool, <laughs> that, which is really where we should have begun. I it's think, probably where we should have begun. No, 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 it's totally fine. You know what, we'll do an... Yeah, we'll do an episode on, like, aphrodisiacs. We'll get into love potions, we'll talk to you. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. um, well, we've got to go. Um, yeah. I could listen to you talk about this forever and always. There are a lot. There are a lot better sources than me. Okay. <laughs> you, you still have their phone numbers. I know. So. Yeah, and and we just want to tell the listeners if you're curious to know Zach's band, it's called the Mute Group. You can look up the song about witches. It's called Abuses and Superstition. Superstition. Wait, I got. Yeah, it wrong. you're good. You're doing Ab- great. Abuses and superstition. Yeah. S. S. Can you say yeah. it, Sandy? I'm having a tongue twister. The mute group, the song is Abuses and Superstitions. Ah, with a S at the end. Yeah. And it's great. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube. Go see it. Whatever. All right. Well, um, yeah, so much so appreciate um, and uh, say kiss kiss the babies for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do. I appreciate you calling. No problem. All right. Thanks, Zach. Bye. Thanks. Bye. That's our show, y'all. Yeah. We would like to thank our dear friend Zach so much for his depth of knowledge. Gosh, he's he's very intellectual. I'm just like, <laughs> I just let him talk because I don't know anything. <laughs> it's great to learn, though. It's great. I and, learned a lot. <laughs> yes, and I feel like I really did get an insight into the concept of witches that we hadn't discussed. Um, so that's excellent to know. I would also like to thank all the uh, Yahoo Answers people for for wasting our time for, well for giving it a shot <laughs> they really tried you know um and thank you to you listeners yes thank you for listening um please uh stay tuned for next week's episode and stay crude dudes yeah <laughs> yeah see ya